Hi there! This is the second video from the series Flutter What's Next. My aim with these videos is to help guide you through the process of learning Flutter after you've pressed the Getting Started button. In this video, we'll be talking about Flutter project structure, as the thumbnail suggests. Quick mention, uh, this video is split in two parts. The first part is about the Flutter boilerplate that is generated once you create a Flutter app. And the second one is how to use a tool to generate everything from your Flutter project to your project files. So I'm gonna walk you through that and explain it in more detail. As I said in the last video, structure helps. So if you want to be able to write proper applications with code that you want to be able to read the next day, you'll have to follow some architectural patterns that we're gonna talk about now. These are general architectural patterns for front-end, but uh, there are some specifics in Flutter anyway. You can choose from many structures you can follow, but uh, in my experience, MVC or MVVM would help you the best and uh, would uh, probably generate the best results. I'm gonna be starting out with the Flutter boilerplate and then we're gonna work up from there. As you can probably tell when you create a Flutter project, you have some files there. These are the files that you need in order to run your application on Android, iOS and the other platforms, depending on when you're watching this video. So we have the iOS, the Android, the lib, the tests and the pub spec. Let's start out with the pub spec. That's where you define everything from the name of your app to the description, your dependencies that will be automatically imported and other tools that manipulate your code. Taking things in order and the order is the order of importance for me in ascending order. We have iOS. This folder contains the iOS app that you have uh, that will be modified uh, whenever you run your code, you only have to change it whenever you're changing some major stuff, like uh, including some uh, harder dependencies and changing the name of your app and the icon. Oh, also permissions. Android is the second one. It's the exact same thing like iOS, literally. But let's say you only have to worry about these ones when you're close to uploading to Play Store and App Store. And we have a long way to go. Tests is where you keep your tests and uh, you should keep a pretty similar file structure as you'll keep in the lib file. Folder, folder, and lib. And this is where the fun begins. When you start out, the only thing you have in lib is your main file that contains a stateful widget and uh, the main function that keeps the run app function. Inside it, you have a, a material app and that's your app. But first, let's get rid of the comments that we have by default. We're going to use some regex found on Stack Overflow to do that with find and replace. So nothing fancy. Let's get on to some refactoring to get rid of the stateful widget from the main file and move it into its own file. That is our home screen. Then we're going to get rid of the stateful part and use provider instead because stateful widget is the devil. Each page should have three files dedicated to it. And that is controller, view and model. The plugin we'll use later will help us create these, but also add the bindings folder to it, which we don't care about for now. So we'll create a folder to keep our home page files grouped together. We will call the folder home screen, but uh, the name page should be reserved for the UI itself. So the classes that hold the UI and the widget will be called page, something page like home page. Imposing rules like this will help keep your code organized and uh, will help you understand your code later on. And uh, also, when you're trying to find something, you'll know what to search for. Then we have to add the state back because we lost it due to removing stateful widget. And as I said, we're using provider for this one. First, we create a file in the homepage folder that will keep the state. 
The class that extends change notifier should hold the variables and the functions that will change the variables. Also, do not forget to make the call to notify listeners in order to have your UI changed. Next, back on the UI, we have to integrate the state by adding the change notifier provider on top of the scaffold. After we have the change notifier provider, we want to use the state, so we add the consumer by wrapping the text widget with it. We use the state from the builder to access the variable. Now, because the floating action button can't access the state, now the floating action button can't access the state because it's on a different branch from the tree. So we have to get the provider on a higher level, aka lifting state up, as you remember from the last video in the series. We're doing this by moving the chain notifier provider above the scaffold so everything inside it can use it. So for now we have the state implemented. Now we need a middleman. And that is because we don't want the UI to change the state. We want a controller, or this middleman, to change the, sta the state and then the UI will follow. You want to do this in order to preserve one functionality per file. This is exactly the S from solid, the single responsibility principle. You can achieve this by creating another file for the controller, however, we can do that with less code through some refactoring of the home state file. First of all, we rename home state in home controller. Also, we create a separate class which will contain all the state variables and which will be called home state now. We instantiate it in the home controller and from now on, this is a controller. Now, home state only holds state, home view only holds the UI parts and the controller takes care of modifying the state, calling the repositories and the services. So this will be a basic file structure for everything needed in a screen. But when you want to create a bigger app, in my experience it's better to use a boilerplate code generator like create react app for react apps and in our case we want to use getx as state management and so we'll use getcli. To install this you have to pub global activate get underscore cli and you're done. To create the project you can go ahead and uh, choose all the default options and you have a functioning app with some predefined structure. Here we already have the three big parts of our app and uh, we'll add two more later. The data part where you keep your models and classes for interaction with databases or backends or external services. Also, the CLI could help you generate uh, models based on JSON files that you provide. This is only if you don't want to use the JSON annotator plugin. I use them both, they're fine. The modules part, where you keep your pages or screens, however you want to call them, this could be nested as well, so if you have a user profile and a user post and you want a user post inside the user profile, you can do that, that's fine. You just say you want to generate it on user profile. The routes part. You want to use routes in order to not reference uh, the UI itself, so the pages. Rather than having to navigate referencing your views, you can always have routes defined that will hold your view and instantiate your state and controller for you. And you can only worry about navigating and uh, having your nested structures for the routes. So let's say you want to navigate from user profile to user posts. You only have to specify the routes and arguments if you have any. And now it's cleaner and more predictable. And now you have to create more folders than I promised. I'm sorry. So the first folder you want to create is core, utils. Here is the folder that you want to put your dates, strings, formatters, extension functions and whatever you don't find the place in a particular contact. Languages for i18l, those are basically just JSON files for every language so your app can work in English and Turkish without having to write extra code for that. Constants like API URLs, 
max number of items loaded at once and whatever else you want to team data where you keep your colors and textiles. Also, we'll want to create another folder that is somehow in the utils part, but uh, not really. The folder is called widgets and here you will keep all the widgets you want to reuse in the entire app. Basically, this folder is a collection of widgets that you want to reuse in the whole application. Let's say the Instagram avatar picture that you have. You find that in uh, the header of a post, in the following and follower section, in the stories section. You can write the code for it once and uh, use it in multiple locations if you have it in a global part as a folder called widgets. And the last ones, and uh, probably the most important ones, uh, repositories and services. You should keep these in two separate folders, of course, because uh, they are quite similar, but also quite different. The only difference in code that you will have or conceptual will be that services will be used for having everything inside the app managed like controllers, but uh, with no access to widgets. And repositories will be used for anything external, like bindings to external services and calls to your backend and your database if you're using Firebase. Also, services are allowed to keep state, but repositories are not. So this is not just conceptual. Create a random repo and a random service. And in the main file, make two functions to in initialize them. Call it in main. And now you have two singletons one a repo and the other one a service. You can call them anywhere and access them by using get.find and in the template braces, the class name and you should have the instance. I may have missed something. I don't know. I hope not. I think you may have seen the fact that I tried to keep it as agnostic of uh, which uh, framework you're trying to use. Even if you're not using get or using get CLI, everything from here applies. And uh, it was quite hard not to impose. Basically, this is not so different if you're using anything else. I think you could use this also in other frameworks for web that uh, are on the same page as Flutter with declarative uh, programming. I guess Vue or React could benefit from the same uh, file structure but yeah i hope this video helped and if you sticked around it until the end thank you you can leave a like subscribe or get in touch with me on twitter i'll leave my socials in the description of the video you can also reach me in the comments of this video i would greatly appreciate this so thanks again bye